Okay, guys. So I had some people ask in the video about uh, some of the things on uh, VCar Pro with this project and uh, how to do them. I also had some people that wanted me to explain the mistake that I made, uh, what happened, and how I fixed it. So uh, what I'm going to do here is just go over this real quick. Uh, the project's already designed, but I'm going to point out everything I did real fast, and then uh, we'll just go from there. So first of all, if you look over here on the left side of the screen, uh, with uh, version 9.007 and higher, which I don't remember it being on 8.5 or whatever the last version was, but it, it may have been, uh, you get the option of a single or double-sided project. So in this case, it was a double-sided project, so I selected that. All your normal settings here, your Z0 position, uh, you have a uh, material surface or a machine bed, um, or you can zero off the same side, which... I honestly don't understand why you would use that, but I'm sure it serves a purpose. Um, now the flip direction between sides is important because that's going to determine how you flip your wood on the machine. In this case, I knew I was going to flip it basically to front to the back, not left to right. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't really know what design scaling is uh, or scale design to the job. Um, Somebody can figure that out, I'm sure. So you get all those settings done, and then uh, you can start your project. Now, to do this box, it was very simple. Um, you just need to make a, uh, a set of three concentric shapes, and you need to copy and paste them um, into another set. This is going to be either your top or bottom, and this is going to be either your top or bottom. Now, basically, the way this works is you have three sets of uh, rectangles here. And what this does is, if you see, if you see here on this toolpath, um, I've done a, uh, a profile. And what that's done is it's cut to the depth between this dotted line and the outside line. And that gives me my, uh, uh, I don't even know what we'd call it. It gives me one side of my, my lip for my box. On this one, what we do is we cut on the outside of this inner line and what that's going to give me is the other half so this will be protruding and this will be carved away and thus they'll fit together i'll do a 3d model of it here in a minute and show you what i mean um, then the reason that these are in here is because this is where i i've done my uh, pocket for the uh, inside of the box um, so just real quick, let me see if I can't get it to uh, do a preview for you. Left lip, the right lip. Um, we'll do the pockets as well. Now, last time I tried to preview a toolpath in here, for some reason it did not preview everything the way it normally does, but uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so we'll give it a minute. It's going to do these uh, the big pockets. It takes a second. While that's happening... Um, let me just say that it takes me uh, forever to actually sit down and do a voiceover for a video. I have three dogs, a wife, and a child. So it's extremely hard to get five minutes of quiet in the house to do this. Um, I've sent them to the bedroom to watch TV for a little while so I can uh, actually accomplish something out here. Um, but anyhow, um, you know, when you're doing your, uh, your pockets and your lips for the sides of the box and whatnot, you just need to keep in mind that, you know, like I said... Since I copied and pasted onto both sides, everything is exactly the same size. So when you carve inside one line and outside the other and you go to put them together, there's no tolerance in there at all. So what I would suggest you do is um, on your bottom piece, you would bring that, that uh, ring in just a hair, make it just a hair smaller. And on the outside piece, you can leave it the same um, and that'll give you your difference. Also keep in mind that uh, this lip right here, it needs to, you need to make sure it's not too thick. Uh, same thing here, your outside wall that's going to be there when you cut it out, you need to make sure it's not too thin. Otherwise, you'll end up breaking something. But as you can see, uh, there's the, the big pocket of the box and then the, uh, the, the lip on the top and the lip on the bottom. Now what I'll do is show you that when you cut it out, you actually get the rest of your see right there it did not preview that even though i had it selected i have no idea why okay well we'll do this one then and that should cut it out so when you cut it out and of course i added tabs um 
So when you cut it out, you get your positive and negative, we'll call it. Uh, there's a better view. Okay, this is what I'd call the positive. This is what I'd call the negative. So pretty simple design. There's not much to it. All right, so back to the drawing. How do we get the other side done? Well, up here, there's a uh, toggle top and bottom side. So when you click that, it flips it over to the other side. And then you can design whatever you want on the top of the box, whether it be pockets or just V-carving, whatever. Um, now, if you see here, I left this... Uh, this uh, rectangle there that was part of the other side um, and you'll see the other stuff in blue that's what's on the other side the reason I left that there was because I pocket carved this and I wanted a border on it um, of course the eagle and uh, everything is bee carved you know this is pocket carved this is pocket carved and then my circles pocket carved um, some more bee carving here and then basically you know what you do is you put it on the machine you do all your fancy design work on your lid and then you run your tool pass for the bottom, making sure that you flip your board the way that this right here indicates that it needs to be flipped. Now, when I when I actually showed you guys, you know, the stuff on the machine, I may have actually cut this part out of the video. But the most important part of this is to make sure that what you put in here is exactly centered. So use your alignment tools and make sure when you cut your wood for the machine that you have a very precise cut. If not, something is going to be off. So that's uh, very important. Now to the mistake that I made. So here's the thing. When you go to do a project, you have the thickness of your stock, you have the length of your bit, and then everything else above that is travel. The, the amount of travel that your, uh, your Z carriage or whatever you want to call it has until it hits the, uh, hits the limit switch uh, on the top of the Z, Z travel path. Now, this board right here is 1.26 inches thick. The quarter inch end mill was over an inch long. And so basically what that meant was I probably only had about a half inch or so of travel before it limited out. The, uh, the way that I ended up fixing it, what uh, everybody explained to me was, you have to do your material setup here. Now you might actually have to get out there and take a measurement first if it's going to cut it really close. But when you click this, it it's going to give you a lot of the same stuff that you had over here. Your thickness of your board, where do you want to start, the material surface, model and position, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that has absolutely nothing to do with it. <clears throat> what you're going to want to look at is the rapid Z gaps and the home start position Z gap above material. So if I only had a half inch of travel before I zeroed out on the limit switch and I had this set to one inch, which is about what it was, it would limit out. The machine is going to think, well, I'm where I need to be, even though it limited out. And then you're going to end up getting a real deep plunge into your piece down here. This also needs to be set to account for the amount of space. So let's say you have a, a full inch between the the bit touching the top of your stock and your z carriage hitting your limit switch that has to be less than an inch somebody told me that uh in v-carve it's automatically 0.20 and that's the what it's always set to i don't know if i ever changed it or not maybe i did and i just don't remember but uh this was set to like one inch or more so this is the culprit in uh the issues that i was having when i uh did this project uh, once again, like in the video, I said, you know, there's uh, YouTube you can watch. Um, but honestly, if you have a problem, uh, I would recommend going over to Facebook, joining some of these CNC groups. So far, I've, I've joined two. And anytime I've had a question, I have gotten uh, very quick responses. And we've always figured the problem out. You can also go to a Vetrix uh no, I'm sorry, Carbide 3D's uh, forum. Those guys are a little slower to answer, but you still get good advice. And if you do a search, I bet you can find somebody that's already had the same problem. So yes, this was the problem that I had. Very easy fix, but very frustrating. If you don't, if you've never had the problem, you don't know what's happening. But uh, big shout out to to the guys over at the uh, Shapoko and Nomad Users unofficial group on Facebook. Y'all are awesome, and you saved me a lot of gray hair. Not that I don't already have a lot to begin with. 
So anyway, like I said, this isn't going to be some, you know, super complete, you know, how to on, you know, how to make this box, but you know, just a quick run through and explanation of my problems. So uh, anyway, once again, thanks for watching the videos. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber. Um, I'm not going to bombard you every day with a new video, but every now and then I'll put something out and uh, I think they're kind of neat and uh, I try to answer as many questions as I can. So feel free to ask questions in the comments and you guys have a nice day.